for you guys, do you think? Well, again, we're playing a couple teams that are ahead of us in the standings. Um, tonight being one of them. And these are games that we, we have to win if we want to make the playoffs. And given the uniqueness of this five-game home stretch prior to the All-Star break and the, the opportunity that it, it presents, we really just we really just have to focus in and, and, and take advantage of the situation. Um, you know, these these five games, they, they really matter. Um, and if you look at the season, and I, I did a couple of days ago, right before that back-to-back, -back, and I was like, oh my God, we're at game 50. I mean, the season is kind of just just flown by all of a sudden. And uh, and all of a sudden we're, we're near the all-star break and we've only got 32 left. And, you know, we have been, we're in a position where, you know, we can be in the playoffs and, and have, have done a good job to put ourselves in a position, but we also recognize we, we need to be a lot better these last 32 games. JJ, you, talk, you talked about looking at the standings and kind of understanding where you are right now. Are you surprised at all at how bunched up things are once you get, you know, down to like really Cleveland, uh, yeah. down and down? Um, uh, not necessarily. Uh, you know, I think there's probably been a, a couple teams that have uh, surprised people. Um, and, and obviously some teams that have underachieved as well. But, um, you know, I, I expected coming into the season that there was going to be uh, nine or ten teams to fight for those eight spots. And, and that's sort of where we're at right now. Um, I, I think you could throw Charlotte in the mix there too. I, I believe they have a positive net rating for the season. Um, or damn near close to it. So, um, you know, they're, they're a good basketball team as well. The, the, is, it, is it important for a guy like yourself to look back home to these younger guys? And, you know what, this is going to come up on you quickly here. This well, is it's something we, we've talked about all season as a team, not just myself, but the older guys and Brett. Um, just the importance of every game. Um, you know, we, we've talked about from the beginning, like our margin of error to make the playoffs is maybe, you know, give or take two or three games either way. And so for us, uh, every game is really important. I've been on teams where we knew we were going to win 50-some games, and, you know, you, you let a couple slide away, and, and they don't hurt you. Um, unfortunately, like every every game that we've let sl slide away, whether that was the game at Sacramento um, or a couple home games where we, we lost fourth-quarter leads, like, you know, those games matter. The trade deadline's on Thursday. You've been traded on the deadline before. I mean, how would you describe what the experience as a player is like in the days leading up to it? And yeah. With all those rumors the, and all that stuff. The rumors are the hardest part. Yeah. It wasn't the actual act of getting traded. I think it's just the uncertainty. Um, the year that I got traded, <clears throat> there were two games post All-Star break and then the deadline. And this is before the week-long break. So I think we had like a Tuesday, Wednesday back-to-back -back, and Thursday was the deadline. And I just remember that second night of that back-to-back -back was, a, was a, an away game in Dallas. And, and I can remember being in that locker room after the game just praying that it would just be over like you know it'd been a month of just non-stop and it was a lot of guys on our team because we were in a rebuilding situation so um, that the biggest thing it's very like, stressful wanted to get over i just wanted it to be over yeah. with and and uh well, you know I've, I've told the story many times about the actual day of the deadline getting the okay from my agent you know an hour prior saying i was going to stay in orlando and then getting the call one minute before the deadline that i had been traded so um for, for any guy again i think it's just like you're going back and forth and you know, you read hoops hype, and <laughs> you see certain guys. One week, the team's saying, "Oh, he's safe. We're not going to make any moves." And the next week, sources say this guy is, is being shopped. So, uh, for anybody that's been in that situation and, and will be in that situation, I, I, I feel their pain. You got you guys are in a position where you know the, this, the goal is stated. You just talked about making the playoffs. Uh, your buyers at the deadline. Um, will you be surprised or anything if, if a deal is or is not made? I mean, how, how do you look at like that? I, I, I literally haven't given it two thoughts. Um, and, and truthfully, I haven't even spoken to anybody on the team about it. I mean, um, you know, that's up to, to Brian and, and, and Brett and ownership to figure that stuff out. We, we need to we need to just go play. But can you typically get a sense when something's going to happen? Like like you said in years, but really. I mean, certain situations, yeah. I mean, you know, Orlando for sure. Um, other times, you don't have a sense. I, I'm, you know, not to not to bring up a guy's name, but I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure Blake Blake didn't have a sense that that was going to happen. You know, so um, these things can come up quick. And again, I, I think um, you typically know which teams are, are sellers at this point in the season and which teams are buyers. And the problem right now. 
across the league is there's uh, a lot more sellers than buyers. And um, the contracts signed in 15 and 16 um, that people are trying to get off are, are, are tough to move because everybody's sort of looking at tax implications. Um, so it's, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if a ton of things happen. It also wouldn't surprise me if, not just for our team, I'm saying mm -hmm. league-wide or if, if not a lot, and it was a quiet day. The Pistons were struggling a lot before they got Blake, and obviously he's giving them some energy, having played with them. Uh, how, how much more of a fearsome team do you expect them to be with him on the roster? I mean, I, got, I love Tobias Harris. I love Avery. I think they're both fantastic players. Um, but, you know, Blake is, is a proven all-star, a proven all-NBA player. Uh, when healthy, um, I think he's easy top 15, top 20 talent in this league. And you don't get many opportunities to add a player of that, of that magnitude. And, um, you know, I think right away they're a better team because he's on the team. Um, and, and, you know, you, I watched their game uh, last night. I was slipping between that and the Wizards game, and you just, it's cool to see sort of Stan over the course of these four games sort of figure out uh, how to use Blake and, and Blake get used to playing with his teammates. But he's a guy that I just, I love playing with for, the, for those four years. And, um, you know, I, I feel like we had, a, we had a great connection on the court, and, uh, and, and he's going to make those guys better for sure. Anything you notice about Washington with, uh, without Wall? Uh, anything they've changed or what they might be doing more efficiently? Um, you know, I think they're they're still running a lot of a lot of the same stuff in terms of spread pick and rolls, multiple actions on every play, catch and shoot for Beal into step ups. It's a lot of the same stuff. Um, but you know, anytime you have a, a point guard who uh, you know is is more on the the ball dominant side, and I, I obviously play with Chris and, and and John is in that elk. You know, uh, what's his face, Russell Westbrook. Um, I mean, these guys, they handle the ball a lot, and, uh, and anytime they're out, somebody's got to end up using those possessions. And, um, you know, you've seen, you know, their team just step up and, and make plays and, and really play free, and you've got to give those guys a lot of credit. Thanks, guys. Thank you.